If you're anything like me, you don't care about the spec list and all the new marketing mumbo jumbo with these new cameras. I don't care about stroking off these brands either or their marketing teams. So let's see how the new camera actually stacks against the previous model without listing a bunch of mumbo jumbo about bigger dynamic range or new sensor technology. Is it all just hype or is there something to this new sensor talk that everyone on YouTube is just so incredibly happy to sell you on? Is it a game changer or just another marketing ploy to get you to buy the new and shiny one? Let's ride and see. All right, let's do first uh, in-city riding. It's a very good test of the dynamic range as there are some very harsh shadows in these buildings and we are riding against the sun also at some points like right now it's definitely starting to look like dji has been very heavy-handed with the hdr on the new release this is the normal 10-bit color mode you will see straight out of the camera and it definitely has a very strong hdr look by default Here we can clearly see more detail in the right side poster, but I think the older camera presents a much more natural and pleasing video in the default profile. Also at times I can definitely start seeing some halo in the contrasty places like tree branches next to the bright blue sky. This is due to the very heavy handed HDR that is done purely by processing the image a little bit differently. Like it or not, under the tree branches, the HDR kind of works as the older camera overexposes the scene quite badly. But the moment we move a bit forward, the older camera exposure is fixed and now it is the clear winner in this scene, where the new one actually starts looking like a cartoon with the heavy HDR. I have my suspicion that all the talk about dynamic range is due to this software manipulation. I could just as easily process the older camera to look insanely cartoonish with an HDR LUT. The same story carries over to this scene. The look on the new camera is completely unnatural and even with the more blown out sky I definitely prefer the video coming out of the older Action 4. Let's get into some forest riding, where I think the HDR look is even worse, because in the city it kind of hides itself in the unnatural habitat, but because of the trees, the HDR look is even more apparent in the forest. And now against the sun, in the middle of the forest. Let's see this forest scene a little bit further. Pay special attention to the flickering sky on the new camera that tries to expose the full scene and starts to look very unnatural and the exposure becomes very unstable. This is another test I like to do. The background there is very bright due to the sunshine, but the bike is in the shadow completely or almost completely. So here you can see the dynamic range difference between the two cameras. But I would also like to see which one is more pleasing and more natural to look at. To me, it's pretty clear which one of these looks more natural and pleasing to the eye. What do you think? 
put your thoughts in the comments below and remember to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more motorcycle content moving forward and give me a like if you like the video so far. At this point I was so disappointed in the color profile on the new camera <clears throat> that this is now shot in d -Log M mode 10-bit color on both cameras and let's see what is the difference if you decide to color grade it using the DJI LUT that you can download from the website. Here I'm actually kind of happy to see both cameras render the scene almost identically in d -Log M mode. This means if you are willing to color grade or use LUTs to get the optimal result, you will be able to avoid using the heavy HDR look of the standard profile on the new Osmo Action 5 Pro camera. Let's now apply the camera specific LUTs available from DJI website to both cameras and see what is the difference if you decide to apply the LUT yourself to the log footage. Links to download the free LUTs are in the description of this video. With the camera specific LUTs enabled, the difference becomes apparent but very, very small. Where is the promised dynamic range of this new sensor DJI? Footage looks a lot better from the D-Log M mode. All the halos around subjects are gone and all the colors are much, much more natural. Now finding differences in this kind of scene becomes almost impossible. The older camera is a tilting a little bit more to the warmer side and the newer camera is a little bit colder, but that's a minor difference and that's easily fixed in post-processing if you like to do that. Maybe night time is the time when the new pro camera is start, gonna start to shine. We're gonna have to do two different tests at least. So normal mode in the Action 5 Pro and nighttime mode enabled in the Action 4. It's a low light mode, I guess. And then a second run with the Action 5 in the new low light shooting mode. It's a separate mode in the new camera. So we're gonna have to see the differences in the, to those two scenarios. Let's do the normal video first in the city and then I'm gonna ride all the way to the darkness in the forest and then let's do the whole thing again in the nighttime mode in the Action 5 Pro and see the difference. Osmo Action 5 in the normal shooting mode. Both cameras are now in 25 FPS. I've lowered it down from 50 during the daytime to 25 so that both of the cameras would have an equal opportunity to get as much light as possible to the sensor and both are shooting now at 16 by 9 and the Osmo Action 4 has the low light mode enabled so the low light enhanced mode basically and the Osmo Action 5 Pro is now in just the normal color mode 25 FPS 4K on both cameras The new camera is allowed to boost the ISO all the way up to 25,000, so we can definitely see more noise with these settings in the new camera. But I have to say the new camera is retaining more detail. In this straight, fairly smooth road, I can notice a bit more stabilization jittering in the new camera. Low light is always a challenge with the electronic stabilization in these kind of cameras.
even though I don't mind the look of the Osmo Action 4 during the nighttime rides, but I do kinda feel like the new camera is gathering a slightly more light and it's not as blurry. Alright, we are now in the super night mode. Let's test out without any lights. I can barely see some stars, but I can't see anything else. I am completely blind. Someone could stand meter from me and I couldn't see. Let's start the bike and ride back. I can't say the Super Night mode on the Action 5 Pro made a huge difference, but it definitely removed some of the noise we were getting on the base settings with the normal video mode. In the Super Night mode you cannot change the noise reduction settings, so I am assuming it's defaulting back to zero from previous minus two. Even though we are in the super night mode on the new 5 Pro and the noise reduction is definitely higher, we are still getting more detail on the new camera. So the night time test I think we need to give the win to the new Action 5 Pro. I don't think the difference is massive but it's definitely noticeable. This was just a test on the apparent video quality differences and I'm not all that impressed with the new camera. There is a lot of software trickery going on here as even DJI can't break the rules of physics. The sensor sizes are exactly the same so we are seeing a more harsh image processing on the new camera and boosted ISO performance which also can result in more noise with these small sensors. Some of the highlights on the user of the new camera are the dual wireless mic support which is a definitely nice upgrade for me personally and both the front and back screens are bigger and way more responsive than any of the previous cameras. In conclusion I would hesitate on upgrading from the Osmo Action 4 to this new camera as it's a very minor change. But if you are running the Osmo Action 3 or older, this can be a very nice upgrade with all the features DJI has put on this new release. Thank you so much for watching. I'm not a camera channel, but if you care for motorcycles too, please feel free to subscribe.